it don't happen it don't shell it can you believe that a sheep judge is cooperating with a jawu boy to rob a bank now if you just you see the video i'm about to play for you today like, is going to surprise you because because the every single thing you know i've been saying that the people that are supposed to be protecting us they are supposed to be defending us uh, the the lawyers the chief judge that are supposed to be defending us about um against corruption are the one they are the one collecting bribe they are the one in charge of the corruption themselves a chief judge a chief judge for that matter cooperate with a yahoo boy with a with a, with a thief with a criminal to rob a bank and they did it successfully but they were caught just stay connected to the very end of this video because I'm about to play you something that will blow your mind off. Hey, you fool. Stay connected. Share this video to that social media platform. I'll be back. See you soon. It's happening in the street again. The center of political news, celebrity gossip, religious gossip. And happiness in the society. Join us, the voice of Africa. Hello, my great and wonderful viewers. Welcome you back to Life Positive Show. If you are new to this show, don't forget to click the subscribe button, the like button, the bell beside it, and also drop your comments in the comment section about what is going on in Nigeria, about what is going on in Africa, and especially what is going on in Nigerian politics, so that it will be notified you anytime we drop another video into the channel. Do you know that since the chief judge? Of Supreme Court have done the greatest corruption in Nigeria. You know, a lot of bad, bad things have now been done by lawyers, by judges. You know, but this this particular thing I'm about to play for you is like really, really shocking. Like I didn't believe that this can ever happen in Nigeria. I can never believe that because, but since the day that the chief judge pronounced a criminal. A crook criminal number one federal criminal that even the, the uh, fbi every every single corporate uh, cia they have they, they, they are after the person since the day that uh, the supreme court declared the person as the president of nigeria that is the day that i know that we are done for in this country we are totally done for in this country can you believe a chief judge should be should be cooperating with a criminal with a with, with a robber just to plan to rob a bank is is that how is that how corruption has gotten to the roots of nigeria if we just stay connected to the very end of this video share this video because this is gonna be very 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 funny to you and people i'll be back see you soon this judge took the judicial corruption to a whole new level never seen before in nigeria then again, nothing is impossible in Nigeria. The sacked judge, Injustice S.O. Falola, connived with the Yahoo boys in an elaborate fraudulent scheme to literally rob a bank. Yes, you heard that right. For those who are not familiar with the slang, Yahoo boys, it's a Nigerian way of saying scammers. How did it happen? Let's start from the beginning. We will group all the people according to their group. Four people belonging to the group of scammers, namely Hamzat Oladimeji, Rafiu Oladimeji, Kadre Latif, and Gabriel Omeka. On the other side, it is the injustice Palola and the lawyer to the scammers plus all the other people involved that did not receive a huge share from the stolen money. Gabriel Omeka has a dollar-denominated domiciliary account with Polaris Bank. It's not clear if he got outside help or the three other scammers helped him to hack the bank to inflate his bank account balance from $23 to $1.2 million. What the hackers forgot to do was to make deposit entries into the account that will make it look real. After the bank recovered from the security breach, they didn't notice the inflated account balance until they were served with a court order. The court order was granted by Injustice Falola of Oshun State High Court. Before he granted the order, the trial of Hamzat Oladimeji, Rafi Oladimeji, Kadre Latif had approached his court with a fake court injunction from Kwara State High Court. No court granted the injunction, but the claims contained in it says that Gabriel Omeka, 
the one that owns the inflated DOM account is owing them 283 million naira, being money from a business deal involving one company. So they presented it like they had a business deal with Gabriel and it went south. They went to court in Kwara State, a court granted an injunction in their favor. So they came to Oshun State High Court, the Court of Injustice Falola, to enforce the judgment in Oshun State. Normally, before this kind of thing can happen, the law requires that the judgment must be registered in the state. They didn't do that, they claimed they registered it with fake documents. The court order or motion ex parte that Injustice Falola issued mandated the bank to show cause why an order of the court should not be made against them over the payment of 283 million naira that their customer is owing the three other guys. Upon receiving this, the bank made all efforts to prove to the court that their customer's balance was $23 before the security breach they had and how no evidence of any deposit from the customer exists. In fact, the bank tendered an acknowledgement letter from the Deputy Commissioner of Police at the Special Fraud Unit, Ikoyi, where they lodged a complaint at the time the breach occurred. They requested the police to investigate fraudulent withdrawals by some of their customers at the time. The police arrested some of their customers and verified that there was a security breach. The letter reads in part, 1. There was a system breach between 2nd and 3rd of December 2018. 2. That the account holders' accounts were fraudulently increased into millions. 3. That the account holders made attempt to withdraw the money before their arrest. All these fell on deaf ears. Their customer maintained in court that he transferred the money to his account before the security breach, while the bank insisted that they couldn't find any evidence of transfer or deposit to his account, that the security breach was done to reflect the amount. Injustice Falola ruled in favor of Gabriel Omeka based on the fact that he produced evidence of the transfer of the funds. So this is just like scammers who pretend to pay for something and send the seller a fake deposit alert. But when the seller consults his account balance, he will see that no deposit was made. In this elaborate fraudulent scheme, the scammers hug the bank to inflate the figures in order to reflect the fake transfer they made. And the injustice played along because he was in on the whole scheme. That explains why they chose Oshun State. Besides, enforcing such an order cannot be done at the bank's branch office. It must be at their HQ in Lagos. And it seems that all rogue judges use the same type of language. While delivering the judgment in favor of the bank's customer, Injustice Falola said, What I find curious is that the third Ganeshi appears to be playing to the gallery by stating step-by-step -step procedures of how transfer of fund is done in the banking system through the final address of counsel. The court can only act on the facts and the law properly placed before it. It is not my duty to fish for evidence or conduct investigation to verify facts contained in the address of counsel. This is reminiscent of the presidential election petition judgment delivered by one of the lady justices who asked the petitioners if they expected her to go to the market to shop for evidence on their behalf, despite the massive evidence they tendered. In the case of Injustice Falola, the bank proved to the court, even with police report, that their customer never made a deposit. But still, because he was part of the elaborate fraudulent scheme, he played his role in the fraudulent scheme. The injustice ordered the bank to pay 283 million naira to Latif, Kadre, and the third guy from the non-existent money held in the account of their customer. The money will be payment of the debt that their customer was owing the three guys. Mind you, the judgment is based on a fake unregistered judgment from Quara State. The injustice gave the bank three working days to comply with the order. He also added a strange demand that the bank draft shall be made in the name of the council to the applicant, that's the three other guys. This tells a lot about the fraudulent scheme. 
any money that the court recovers must go to the registrar. That's how it is done. The bank was supposed to make this public so that people will know about it. But maybe they were thinking about their image. They didn't want people to know about their ongoing litigation and all that. They ended up playing into their hands. There was a reason they chose Oshun State to execute this elaborate scheme. Anyway, the judgment was delivered on a Friday and the bank filed an appeal on the following Tuesday and they served the appeal at the High Court Judicial Division. This means they are still within the compliance period, it hasn't expired. In fact, they are still one day left, but the unthinkable happened. Injustice Falola signed a warrant of execution of the Ganeshi order he made the same Tuesday before the expiry of the compliance period. In other words, he gave the bank three days to comply, he didn't even allow two days to pass, he signed a warrant of execution which they levied on two branches of the bank in Oshobo, despite receiving the appeal notice. Armed with the order, they raided their two branches on July 19th cutting away assets of the bank and physical cash on the counters. On July 22nd, they raided two more branches in Oshun State. All the raids they made, they didn't itemize what they seized from the bank. While office desks, computers and other items were recorded at the chief registrar's office, all the money they took from the banking hall and ATM machines were never recorded. In all the rates, they stole a total of 16.4 million naira from the bank. That's according to the bank's estimate, not counting their furniture, electronics, and other stuff that they carted away, including vandalized ones. A month after, in August, the appeal court set aside the order of injustice for Lola. Now, the bank became determined to escalate the situation and expose the injustice. A new lawyer took charge and he investigated the fraudulent scheme and he discovered that there was no court order from Quara State in the first place. His investigation opened many can of worms, so he demanded to see Injustice Falola. The Injustice obliged him and told him that he will come to his Lagos office. He came on the appointed date, he was caught on CCTV. He begged the lawyer that he will run around and pay back the 16.4 million naira. He also revealed that one of the judicial workers that took part in the fraudulent scheme just bought a new car. He admitted that he was aware that the whole thing was a scam, that his registrar and other officers played 419 on him in order to make money. He prostrated to the lawyer, begging him not to report him to the National Judicial Council, not to damage his career a career that he himself already damaged by conniving with scammers to rob a bank. On the day he was supposed to pay back the money as he promised, a notice of appeal and motion of stay of execution were filed against the appeal the bank won. The injustice was contacted by the bank's lawyer. He reneged on his promise and said that he will wait for the outcome of the appeal. To cut the whole story short, the bank's lawyer took all the evidence he gathered from his investigation and petitioned the NJC. The NJC delivered their verdict over the weekend. They recommended that Injustice S.O. Falola should be sacked. Some people are very shameless. Is it a must to be a judge? Imagine having a case in front of this one. You stand no chance despite being innocent. If one thinks he's not earning enough, why not change career instead of disgracing himself and his family and the entire country at large? This corruption, they've taken it to the national level, from bottom to top, up to the Supreme Court. It's also a shame that it took the NJC this long to recommend the sack of a rogue judge. Imagine all the lives his decisions affected all the years he practiced. The whole system needs a serious overhaul. Thanks for staying connected at the very end of this video, my great and wonderful viewers. You know, I was thinking that what could lead this man, this judge, to do this kind of abomination? Because I was, you know, it came to my memory, memories that, and I noticed that if the Supreme Court did not do that great corruption, it, it, they will, these other judges will never 
we never do this kind of thing you know since when the supreme court has done this um declared bola as the uh, 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 as the president of nigeria others have now been doing nonsense they have been doing things against the constitution they have been creating their own you know they have been creating their own constitution for themselves see what happened in in, 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 um, in kogi state see what happened in imo state see every single thing that has been happening but what will we say nothing because the president the the, the the president the leader of the country is a criminal himself and he, he was he was saying that we should not be we should not work against the progress of nigeria when you yourself are the one that is declining the progress of nigeria you know i do i i'm i'm, I'm always i'm always ashamed of these politicians anytime i hear the amount of money they want to spend on something or something that is not even necessary that is not even important they will say they want to spend billions of money billions of money on something that doesn't even make sense the only thing that Bola Metunubu said he wants to do that he wants to had he want to he want to do five billion he wants to give five billion to to students five billion naira to students he has not done it in now he has not done it in now so my people, I just used to, I just used to wonder what is the major problem of this country? What are we what should we do to 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 eradicate this this these corrupt leaders, these corrupt judges away away from Nigeria? So my is the only thing we can do is to come out and challenge them. If we don't challenge them, it it, it will continue to happen. It will continue to go like that for generation to generation. Nobody will stop them. Nobody will stop them. It will continue to go for generations to generations, and our children children will continue to suffer because we the masses are the ones suffering this problem. It's not the politicians. It's not the rich. Is we the the masses, we the citizens that are doing the work day and day by night. We are the, the, that are dropping that 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 we are the one paying taxes. We are the one doing every single thing. We are the one suffering the consequences. Not them. So if we don't come out and face our problem ourselves, nobody will help us to do it. Nobody, believe me, nobody will help us to do it. I'm very very surprised, but I'm I like I'm disappointed in Nigeria in Nigeria in Nigeria judiciaries. I'm very very disappointed in Nigeria judiciaries. Though this man license have been withdrawn, though, but the major corruption, the root of this corruption was not tackled. The root of this corruption was not tackled, so it will continue to happen. My people will always stay connected to the Lajipot TV show and don't forget to click this video, click the subscribe button, the like button, the bell beside it and don't forget, share this video to other social media platforms so that everybody will see, everybody will know the root of corruption in this country. It is the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court are the root of the corruption in this country because if they are not, if, if they are not there to support us, if they are not there to fight our battles for us, who will do it for us? Who will? Nobody nobody will fight our battles for us they are there to to help us to challenge these people to challenge these wicked people away from them but they are, they are the ones supporting the wicked people my people please stay connected to the live TV show don't forget click the subscribe button the like button the bell beside it and also drop your comments in the comment section about what has done been said in this video see you in my next video god bless you and god bless nigeria don't forget keep a positive mind Thank you for staying connected and like what TV show. Leave the message up and leave the letters on your card you. So all we do on this channel is to bring to you a specific word from me of God in America and outside America from the thousand of Jimmy Greg and Chris Mann from the Disney and Bullock and Clement and all of that. So we'll deal you with some value that we're going to from them and also their prophetic world. And guess what? Many of these promises are really, really coming through. So just make sure you subscribe to this channel just to get more of the promises if you are saying. Guess what? See you in the next video.